Hi, this is your professor, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to solve some equations. I was going to say we're going to review equations, but there'll be a little bit of review from pre-algebra and then heading on into the real thing. All right, so let's solve this first equation, which you could probably do in your head, perhaps, except for that negative 9. That might be a little troublesome. We're going to do the opposite to solve this equation, OK? I need to get x by itself. This 5 is getting in my way. I can't get x by itself while the 5 is there. So I'm going to do the opposite. Since 5 is added to the x, I'm going to subtract the 5. Technically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the opposite of the 5. Since it's added, I'm going to add the positive, the opposite of the 5, which is a negative 5, and I'll add a negative 5 over here. Now, 5 plus negative 5 is 0, leaving me with x by itself. Bring down the equal sign. Negative 9 plus negative 5 is negative 14. So our answer is x equals negative 14. I'm going to put that in the answer box. Negative 14. Check my answer. And I got it right. Let's move on to the next one. x minus 8.4 equals negative 6.8. And be sure to, uh, to look at the always, always look at the instructions and always look at the blue instructions, OK? These say solve the equation using the addition property of equality. Don't forget to perform a check. Oops, I didn't check the last one. I'll have to check this one. Simplify your answer. Type an integer or a decimal. Well, they're going to let us get away with decimals this time. I guess because we're starting off with decimals. OK. We're supposed to use the addition property of equality. This is what I have to do with those negative numbers. x minus 8.4 equals negative 6.8. Eight. I'm going to turn this into an addition problem by doing the following. Now watch carefully. x plus negative 8.4 equals negative 6.8. Now again, I have to get x by itself. So I'm going to add the opposite to both sides of the equation, add the opposite of the number that I really need to move from this side to this side in order to get x by itself. So what is the opposite of negative 8.4? It's positive 8.4. I'm going to add positive 8.4 to both sides of this equation. Now, I know that when I add negatives, you learn this in pre-algebra, when you, when you add opposites, rather, when you add opposite numbers, that is, it's the same number, but they have opposite signs, that's 0. So now I have x left all by itself. Now, if you have a little trouble with decimals, let's go over here to the Wabbit Move free calculator that you can put on your, uh, your computer as well. OK, let's hit Enter again. And I'm going to say negative. This is the negative sign. Don't use the, the subtract sign use, uh, unless you're subtracting. But here we're adding, so use the negative sign. Negative 8.4. Oh, I looked at the wrong one. Nope. All right, let's get rid of it by hitting the Clear button. Negative 6.8, so negative 6.8 plus 
4. I was looking at the wrong side of the equation. I need to be looking at this side of the equation. Negative 6.8 plus 8.4. Now the calculator says that equals 1.6. All right, now I admit I'm cheating a little bit. Yes, I am. I'm going to go ahead and check the answer by putting the answer in the answer box and seeing if I am told that the answer is correct. So my answer is going to be 1.6. Let's see if that's correct. Yes, it is. Let's move on to the next one. But first, let's go over this. Whenever you subtract, that's exactly the same thing as adding the negative. Okay, so x minus 8.4 is the same thing as x plus negative 8.4. The negative sign sticks onto the number behind it. Okay, let's go to number 3. All right, and that's pretty much like what we just did, so let's go to, ooh, is that ugly? But we can do it because we are so tough. I'm going to get a new page. Okay. We have parentheses. Remember, parentheses are a grouping sign. We have parentheses. 5y plus 6 minus parentheses 4 plus 4y equals 3. Now here I have a minus, and having a minus can really mess up my addition property of equality. So I'm going to rewrite this problem as and understood one in front of this set of parentheses since there are no numbers here and an understood negative one in front of this set of parentheses because the negative sign is there but there was no other number so there's an understood one. This and this say exactly the same thing. Okay, now, 1 times, well, no, first, what am I going to do? First, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say 1, parentheses, 5y plus 6. Now, I'm going to say plus negative 1 times 4 plus 4y equals 3. And now, we're going to work this problem. I'm going to distribute 1 times 5y is 5y, and 1 times plus 6 is plus 6, and negative 1 times 4 is negative 4 plus negative 1 times 4y is negative 4y equals 3. Now, I'm going to combine my like terms. The y, the, the uh, variable terms, that's what a letter term is called. The variable terms are like terms. I'm going to rewrite the like terms next to each other. Okay. These are like terms, they're variable terms. These are like terms, they're pure number terms, and we call those constants. Now if I have 5 y's and I add negative 4 y's, we know that 5 plus negative 4 is 1, so I'll have a 1 y. Meanwhile, positive 6 plus negative 4 is positive 2. So I'll have 1y plus 2 equals 3. And since 1y, 1 times y, whenever you have a number in front of a letter, it's understood that you're multiplying the letter. So 1 times y is y. I'll have y plus 2 
equals 3. Then I'm going to use the addition property of equality that says to get the letter by itself, I'm going to add the opposite of the number that's added onto the letter. So the opposite of positive 2 is negative 2. I'm going to add negative 2 to both sides of the equation because whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side as well. 2 minus 2 is 0. I'm left with a y. I'm going to move it over here. 3 plus negative 2 is positive 1. And so my answer is y equals 1. So I'm going to put 1 in the answer box right here. And I'm going to check my answer. There we go. I got it right. Let's move on. Number five. Ooh, that's terrible, but let's do it anyway. It looks exciting. Let me find an, a new piece of paper here. Oop, got a lot of writing here. Here's some more paper, fresh paper. Okay, here we go. Two parentheses b plus two. Here's that minus again. Parentheses eight plus b equals negative six. Now I'm going to do, oh I'm going to rewrite this first. Two times b plus two plus negative one times eight plus b equals negative six. Now I'm going to distribute. Two times b is two b, and two times positive two is positive four. Notice I, I made sure the plus sign was there. And then I'm going to add negative one times positive eight. That will give me negative eight. And I'm going to add negative one times positive six. That's negative six. And that will equal negative six. Now, oh, that's not a six, it's a B. I hate Bs. They look like sixes. This is a B. Okay, much better. This is a negative B. All right, now, I'll have two B plus that negative B is a negative one B plus four plus negative eight equals negative six. 2b plus negative b is 1b. And 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4. So I'll have negative 6. Now I need to get the 1b, which is really just b, all by itself because 1 times b is b. That's why b is b. Um, anyway, I have to add the opposite of negative 4 to this side of the equation and to this side of the equation, but I'm adding it because over here, if I add a negative 4 and a positive 4, I get 0, which leaves me with 1 times b, which is b, over here. And over here, oops, look, it's so easy to forget to add to both sides. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. and I got the answer b equals negative 2. Let's see if that's correct. Negative 2, enter. Yes, it is. So I'm right. OK. Now, before I move on, I'm going to uh, take a pause. Talk to you later.